Hello everyone and welcome to another What Sold on eBay video for you today. Once again, I am Chris, the Thrift Shop Hustler. 30 years of reselling experience. I am the eBay. That's, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, hopefully all the things we're going to go over some of the things today we're actually going to do a deep dive for those that are new to the channel what i do is i go over the things that we sold and uh, this this episode is going to be particularly special because i'm going to take a deep dive into some of these items so you're going to learn a lot more than you would normally uh, from these videos so i really appreciate you uh definitely coming in uh we got jeffrey d in the house we got mary keach seven as a matter of fact you know what mary keach seven i should probably give you the wrench let me give you the wrench i'm gonna add you as a moderator you're here all the time and i really appreciate your support so you just got blue wrench sir or ma'am however you go thank you for your support uh so anyways uh definitely click the like button if you're new to the channel if you like this kind of stuff if you're new to the channel definitely click the subscribe button click the bell for notifications when we go live um, I've kind of been slacking in the live department. It's been super hot here in California. I work here up in the attic and, and there's no air conditioning. There's air, but no air conditioning. So it's like super hard for me to do videos. So it's one of those things where um, I do it. And I really appreciate everyone's support. You know, all your comments and your likes, they really help the channel. I don't really make any money on this YouTube channel. I think I make like $100 a month on the AdSense, which is ridiculous and sad in a way for uh, the amount of stuff that I produce. So um, the best thing you can do is definitely like leave a comment, click the like button and all that kind of stuff. It definitely helps other people see the channel. Speaking of which, we just uh, reached over 9,000 subscribers. So I really appreciate that. And that really doesn't mean anything anymore, I guess, apparently. Uh, we're thinking about doing other stuff. I might actually start a Patreon. And so uh, I've been asked over the years, why don't I, you know, have my own groups? Why don't I have my own learning things? And I think I actually might get into that the department and uh, start a Patreon because there's a lot of things that, you know, I always talk about and it would give me motivation to actually go and make videos on specific stuff that, you know, because basically here's another thing too. And I, I'm going to get into, I'm going to get into uh, what's sold on eBay real quick. I got to rant a little bit, you know. There, I looked on my AdSense, there's like 87% of the people that watch my programming aren't subscribers, which is a crazy amount when you really think about it. So um, I kind of want to do something for the hardcore people that want to learn. And like I said, YouTube AdSense uh, is definitely not... It, like I'm, I basically lose money making these videos if that's even hard to do, but I love making these videos and I want to make them, but I, you know, it's like, it's like one of those things. Like if I, if I didn't have to worry about paying bills or anything, I would literally do this all day long for you guys for sure. Cause I really am passionate about it. Uh, we got Mary death deals in the house. We got echo retro. We got Neville. We got Tim C. We got John Jello, Jig, Jig, Jiglo. I think that's sounded right. Uh, Rosina, that's what a Z, Rosina N, welcome. We've got the blue wrenches in the house. Let's get around to you. You want to hear about my crap. You don't want to hear about my, my, uh, AdSense. So let's get right into it. That's why you're here and I'm glad you're here and I'm glad everything's working. Hope everyone's having an amazing hump day. Uh, I won't be doing any humping today. Unfortunately, I'm married and we can go down that road. But anyways, <laughs> uh, let's get right into it. Uh, first up, we have this first gear 1951 Ford truck. Now, this was made in 1992. It wasn't made in 19, 1951. It is replicating a 1951 Ford truck. This is a Navajo Freight Lines. This is 134th scale. And for those that don't know what scales are, uh, basically uh, die cast. Like, um, I think Hot Wheels are 164th scale. Uh, I know HO scale for trains is 157. Uh, 118 scale is, you know, it's about a foot long for a car. And one to one scale is like the scale of a real car. Um, I should know the math on this by now because I used to work at a die cast place. But basically, uh, the larger the number, the smaller the item usually is. So like one one hundredth scale would be very small. One twelfth scale would be pretty big. Uh, one to one scale is basically the real size of a real car or anything like that. So now that you got a little bit of information on uh, the scaling of die cast cars and things like that, I did a die cast video. And if I can remember, I'll put it up here. Uh, for you guys to enjoy uh, in the next. And if, like I said, if we do do a Patreon, I'm going to dive into like all these subjects like really intricately because um, there's so much information on just the diecast world alone. And I've, I've, I've lived this. I worked at a diecast store for uh, three years in my early 20s. And I can tell you a lot about this subject. 
Uh, but anyways, First Gear is one of those kind of uh, niche brands. They don't really make a lot of stuff. They make a really weird scale, which is 134. It's, it's kind of in between... Um, like it's, it's still large. It's kind of big, like a 124 scale, but it's not quite as, is is large. And, uh, first gear is the company. We're going to go and show you some of the things that we're going to take a deep dive here. Like I promised on this episode. Um, so as you can see here, some of the, the freights, the trucking boxed items go for a pretty good amount of money. So look for first gear. This is what it's going to look like. You know, I see some of, some of these are going for, a pretty good amount of money now don't get too excited when you see first gear it's not they're not all like going to be worth a ton of money but as you can see here uh do your research on every piece and uh, this is basically what some of the the larger boxed items look like here in a box and this is basically what the the logo looks like right here it says first gear and uh, that's definitely a brand uh, to look out for like i said it's not like one of those brands that every single thing uh, that's in that thing is going to be super expensive. It's just one of those things uh, right there for sure. Uh, Neville says 1951 is the year I was born. Awesome, Neville. Uh, that is so cool. 1951 is a very special year uh, in baseball cards because that is the year of Mickey Mantle's rookie card. 1951 Bowman. Uh, Mickey Mantle's first uh, rookie for for tops is 1952, which is a very expensive card, especially if you can get it in gem mint condition. Uh, but 1951, the 50s were a pretty amazing time for America. You know, just after the war, the baby boomers were starting to be born. And uh, that was like one of the, the few times that we had, you know, a pretty good amount of peace and tranquility in the United States was the 50s. So uh, for those that grew up in the 50s, awesome. Enjoy it because everything else was downhill from there. Uh, but anyways, uh, awesome, Neville. Thank you for uh, showing. Uh, let's do it right here. Uh, Rosina says uh, that Snoopy uh, toy sold. My husband had to box it up when I was looking. Okay, so that's something else. Uh, Mary Keach 7 says, Chris, when are you going to do a live show with Auction Professor? We're going to be doing something with Dominic, the primetime treasure hunter, and Dominic, Don, or Don, the... the um, <laughs> The auction professor on the 20th. Uh, I, have to, I have to schedule that. So uh, on the 20th, we're going to do another live show. Uh, I guess a reseller university, university thing for sure. Uh, next up, we have this Archie Bunker President mug. This is from 1972. All in the Family is the TV series. Uh, for those that are in Generation X like myself, we might, and, and, and you know, millennials and things like that, might not know about All in the Family. It was a very controversial show in the 70s. They touched on all kinds of subjects like race, political issues, social issues. And uh, it was ahead of its time, definitely. Uh, Neville could probably remember this show. And uh, they made some some cups in 1972. Uh, kind of like a joke, tongue-in-cheek kind of joke. Uh, Archie Bunker for president. And, of course, you know, Edith, first lady, Gloria for consumer consumer affairs and Michael for secretary of labor, which is pretty funny because uh, the whole joke of the the show for Michael, which is Archie, Archie Bunker's son, um, he was like a kind of like a deadbeat, <laughs> and he was like kind of like a, a a stoner slash deadbeat. So the secretary of labor is pretty funny if you watch the show. It's it's very it's very funny. Uh, but anyways, we did take a best offer for thirty four ninety nine. We did ship these with care. And uh, I do highly suggest when you're shipping mugs or glassware, if possible, to use peanuts and, uh, of course, wrap it in bubble wrap and then put it in peanuts. And why that is, is peanuts have so much space in between them where if it's dropped straight down, the peanuts actually cushion the blow better than bubble wrap straight up because bubble wrap straight up is very hard once it starts to get packed. And you're going to have that impact against the ground could cause breakage in certain areas that are weak in the glass. So if you don't have peanuts, <clears throat> don't worry about it. But if you do have your option to have peanuts, definitely wrap the glass in bubble wrap and then put peanuts around it so that there's that dro dropping cushion. And uh, we'll do a video on that at some point uh, down the road for sure. Most definitely. So definitely... Uh, look out for that for sure. Uh, Jeff C says, I used to have Archie Bunker for president sweatshirt when I was a kid. Uh, I haven't looked into that. That's pretty funny. 
Uh, Rosina says, thanks for doing these shows, Chris. Really informative and helpful. It means a lot, for sure. Uh, Mary also says, I love how Edith says, foist lady. Oh, does it say that? Oh, my God, it does. I didn't even notice that. So that's another inside thing. Is she's she's kind of got a little voice like this. And so, and so first would sound like foist, foist. She was like the original um, Lois from Family Guy. That's basically, if you ever watch Family Guy, Lois is based off of Edith Bunker, if you really kind of put two and two together and stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> Seth MacFarlane just steals a bunch of stuff from other people. Anyways, uh, next up is this Lewis Nickel doll a lot collection of porcelain dolls. Some people think these dolls are freaky looking. I actually like dolls. Uh, when I worked at a die cast store, I've said in my early 20s, we actually sold dolls and bears. And um, I learned a lot about dolls, but I don't know an extreme amount. As a matter of fact, I've done a video on how to ship dolls. Uh, we're going to probably do a deeper dive into that at some point. And so um, just one of the things, uh, we did lot this up. You, you're going to find dolls in estate sales mostly. And every once in a while, you'll find them at garage sales and uh, <clears throat> um, Goodwill. God, I almost I just like lost my train of thought there. And so usually if you can lot them up, you can sell them easily that way, especially if you get them cheap. Uh, just like we, we said before real quick, we, we, we will reiterate that's a that's a word and so porcelain dolls are going to have porcelain heads porcelain arms porcelain feet and legs usually everything else is usually going to be cloth or something like that so if you're ever buying these make sure that you look at the porcelain parts that they're not cracked or broken um, shipping these is a whole other thing i have a video if i can remember i'm going to stick it up here and uh, it's kind of funny because I made that video and I forgot to actually put the part where I actually put it in a box. I only showed the part where I bubble wrapped the specific item so they wouldn't break. So uh, we'll be revisiting that at some point for sure. But anyways, this sold for $99.99 and it was a, a pretty uh, good sale here for sure. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Michelle with 1L says... Boyd's bear poly or box. Sorry, kind of off topic. I don't understand what that means. Boyd's bear. I know what Boyd's bears are. Um, they do make Boyd's bears does make ceramic ones and they do make plush. I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. Oh, I think I see what you're saying. Poly bear or box. Um, I would always box stuff up when you have the option. Uh, poly bags are usually good for um, clothes and things that are soft that aren't going to break. Um, a teddy bear or some kind of plush, you don't really want to get that mangled up in shipping, which if you put something in a poly bag, you're literally a hundred times in your likelihood of some issue happening with the mangling of the systems. So uh, definitely if you can ship in a box, always ship in a box. And if it's like over a pound, you can put something in a box and then put it in a, in a, in a priority mailer which is like seven something or six something. I forget how much it is. So uh, there's that. So so my always tip is ship stuff in a box when you can, especially collectibles, because they're less likely to be damaged. But there's a whole thing in making sure that once you put it in a box, you secure it with some dunnage and stuff like that. And uh, like I said, we're going to be doing more shipping videos at some point because uh, there's a lot of people that ask questions about shipping and uh, some of the, the the methods that I do. Like I said, I've been I've been reselling for over 30 years. I've been on eBay since 1995, 96, and uh, I was doing auctions before that. So um, I've learned a lot of things over the years, and failure is probably one of the best teachers for sure. And like I said, we we still get some breakage every once in a while, but once you learn all the tips and tricks, you can cut down the percentage dramatically. Uh, next up, we have this yellow gold men's hieroglyph pattern. I would have probably put an Egypt in this one. <clears throat> but huge shout out to Paula from Stockton. This is a great sale. We, we took a best offer for $150. Uh, these are cufflinks. For those who don't know, basically cufflinks are the little things that go on the sleeves right here in uh, long sleeve shirts that, you know, some of them don't have buttons. You have to use the cufflinks. And sometimes, you know, you can just use the cufflinks over the buttons which usually people do because most shirts that are produced nowadays have buttons and so uh, that's what those are these were marked 12 karat on the back let me show you what that is you can't really see a great um 
<clears throat> zoom in and a pro tip for those uh, that are into pro tips if you have a jeweler's loop you can use it on your iphone let me see if i can do this i don't have a jeweler's loop with me oh wow i'm black on black Woo -hoo -hoo. Woo! black on black ah spooky oh that didn't work okay um let's see here uh you can use basically your see like i said this isn't going to work i have to go to the other thing with the thing there we go ah uh, there's the light i can see the light anyways you uh take your jeweler's loop and you can put it on this little camera thing and you can actually take zoomed really high-end zoomed photos with your phone with a jeweler's loop and so i highly recommend if anyone's going to be doing that uh to most definitely uh, take some photos of the marks any hallmarks any kind of stamping items and stuff like that so that is that for sure uh next up we have this we, we i don't know we had dolls we had dolls here's the thing i'm so backed up with these videos i can i've told you this the last time i can literally probably do two weeks straight of what sold videos that were, i'm so behind uh but anyways we had two uh doll kind of things that i want to show you mary benner uh, antique reproduction she's an artist that's been doing dolls for years we've talked about this this is a bolo brand mary benner and i don't think i actually uh, showed the this one didn't particularly have a tag as we can see here this is what it's going to look like i wonder if i can zoom in let's try this i'm probably going to screw this up royally oh no i could do it oh no i can't never mind i lied i thought i can zoom in uh, but not looking for mary benner and uh like we said um this is a bolo doll brand for sure we we sell these very fast and these things get lumped in with doll collections all the time and people don't know well i got all these dolls <laughs> dolls and they they freak out and their their brains literally melt and come out their nose but i'm telling you this brand is a brand you need to look out for now i'm going to show you a little something and uh we're going to look at worth point now i have a subscription to worth point and i'm going to open this up to some of the uh, some of my subscribers at some point and we'll talk about that at another we'll talk about that at another time so if you're curious about what some things are worth and you don't want to um, try worth point you can actually try it out for 30 days for free and then cancel your subscription it's about twenty dollars a month anyways as we could see here uh, some of these dolls are going for the thou in the thousands this one this top one sold in 2016 for two thousand now these are usually the the one-off ones that she makes uh, they're very highly detailed and uh, usually one-offs, as we can see here. Um, she's a very well-known artist. Even some of the heads can sell for uh, pretty good money. And so this is what she looks at, look like. You know, some of these go in the hundreds. She has, every time we list these, they're sold within 48 hours. So it's one of those things to definitely uh, look out for, <clears throat> for sure. Uh, Mary, Mary Death, is it, is it Deathly, Deathly Deals? Is that what it is? I always wanted to say Mary Deathly Deals. You can use any jeweler's loop. You can even use a magnifying glass if uh, you have a strong enough one. Just put it over your thing. Just put, <laughs> Never mind. Next up, we have this Patrick Nagel oxide. So it did, it did zoom in out, but not the way I wanted it to do it. There we go. Patrick Nagel, we talked about this before in the what sold in July, the top 10 things. We took a best offer for $600 real quick on this. Uh, Patrick Nagel is an artist you should look out for. Uh, I've seen his prints in Goodwill and things like that. And uh, art is, is, there's a lot of people that say that the Goodwill situation is dead, which it pretty much is when you really think about it. But um, if you start studying glass and art, that's a lot of stuff that, the employees at Goodwill aren't that savvy on. And I've found prints of these on the floor for like five bucks. They weren't signed, but you can still get like probably like 40, 60, $80 for just the prints that aren't signed. So I'm just saying, look out for this particular artist. His style is very unique. You're, you're not going to miss it. See, this is what the style looks like. As you can see here, some of the signed ones go for hundreds of dollars. Some of the prints actually that aren't signed actually go for a pretty good amount of money too. It's very unique. It's like almost like a um, Japanese animation kind of style. And just look out for the word. 
Patrick Nagel, and I'm pretty sure I'm butchering that name. It's probably like uh, Patrick Nagil or Nagali or something like that. But, you know, whatever. It's Nagel. You can say it. Patrick Nagel or Nagel or, you know, it's probably some crazy name like that. Like, oh, I'm Pekarika Nagelia or some crap like that. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Neville says you can also use a zoom on your camera to check computer parts as well. Yes, indeed. Anyways, uh, I want to, I really appreciate everyone tuning in. Uh, definitely click the like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We're going to be doing more of these videos once the heat starts to like that be, be better. My brain is already melting and my phone's already beeping. Anyways, I hope everyone has an amazing day. Uh, definitely click the like button. Leave a comment below and we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Good luck on sales today.